Hi Year 12, um, in this video we are going to look at um, the final of the, the three forces um, involved in the uh, standard model of particle physics uh, and some of the Feynman diagrams involved. So we're looking at what's known as the strong nuclear force or the strong nuclear interaction. Um, this is the force that binds nucleons together inside the nucleus. And we've looked at this uh, previously. Uh, we'll kind of just recap that briefly in a moment. Um, the strong nuclear force is fundamentally the, the exchange particle that's involved here is something called the gluon. Um, and the gluon is the exchange particle for what we call the strong force. Um, as a kind of bit of a higher level model, so not as, not, not as detailed um, a model, we can consider the, the force between nucleons to be due to the exchange of pions, or virtual pions, I should say. Okay. So in terms of the exam spec, we need to know that the strong nuclear force is due to the exchange of virtual pions. Um, gluons are not included in um, the, the A-level spe specification. So just as a brief recap, what we're talking about here basically is inside a nucleus, we've got protons and neutrons. Those are what we collectively refer to as nucleons. And the protons are going to be repelling due to the electromagnetic force between them. Um, but the reason the nucleus holds together is there is this strong force that acts equally between all of those particles. So protons attract protons, neutrons attract neutrons, and protons and neutrons attract. Um, we looked previously at the kind of shape of this force. Um, so if we sketch the, the force and how it varies with separation, um, if we say that this is repulsive, this positive value and a negative value is attractive, um, the curve we get looks something a bit like that. Um, it's attractive from about three femtometers. So it's a very short range force. Um, three femtometers is, you know, the size of, of a nucleus or smaller than the size of a nucleus. So this force doesn't extend outside the bounds uh, of the nucleus. Um, the reason it has such a short range is to do with the mass of these exchange particles. Uh, pions are quite heavy particles, about half the mass of a proton and the heavier an exchange particle is the shorter the range it has. Um, so it's got varying sizes of uh, attractive force um, up to about one femtometer. So remember a femtometer is 10 to the minus 15 of a meter. So around about one femtometer this force becomes repulsive. Um, this curve is um, what we would describe as uh, empirical, and um, basically means it's it's obviously informed by scientific theories, but it's a shape that has been arrived at because it fits uh, experimental data, it fits what's observed. Um, the attractive part of this uh, force is due to these exchange of virtual pions. So that's what we're going to have a look at the uh, Feynman diagrams for. So um, we're going to start with, uh, we'll look at a proton interacting with a neutron. So there are various diagrams that we can draw for this interaction. Um, first one, 
You can use the dash line for the exchange particle. So we're going to have a, a neutron in the same vicinity as a proton. Obviously, this is happening within a nucleus. Uh, neutron emits a neutral pion, a pi zero. Uh, we draw a change in direction to represent the fact that that has transferred momentum um, from the neutron to the to the pion. The pion is received by the proton. We draw a change in direction. Um, obviously, this is an attractive force that we're talking about. Remember, these diagrams, they're not designed to be showing us anything realistic about the direction or the speed uh, of these particles. Um, the fact that these are shown moving away um, is, is not relevant, really. We're just showing the fact that... Um, momentum is being transferred uh, between them or force is acting uh, between them so that's one um, diagram that we can draw um, we could equally draw the proton emitting the neutral pion just a slightly different um, time ordering. Um, we can also have the interesting idea that one of the nucleons, so we'll do the proton in this case, can emit a charged pion. So if that happens, this proton is actually going to turn into uh, a neutron. Um, that pion, let's say we're still looking at a proton interacting with a, a neutron. Neutron absorbs that charged pion and it changes its identity to a proton. So in that example, what we're sort of suggesting is happening or what is happening inside the nucleus is actually neutrons and protons are switching identity. Um, obviously, overall inside the nucleus, we still end up with the same number uh, of neutrons and protons. So we've got a couple of examples there with neutral pions. We've got an example with the exchange of a positive pion. Um, I'll leave it as an exercise for you. See if you can draw a Feynman diagram involving the exchange of a negative pion. So you can do this between uh, a proton and a neutron. Now, obviously, there are other combinations we haven't drawn here. Um, we've looked at protons and neutrons attracting. Um, there are other diagrams that we could draw. Um, for example, two neutrons attracting, two protons uh, attracting and so on. So if you want to see how many more you can come up with, that would probably be uh, a good thing for you to try. Right, that's it.